So sodium not only is required to get the glucose into the blood, it's also required to get the water into the cell. So it's sodium. It's the third most vital element needed for life. And you can get that information on the four vitals in any anatomy and physiology book, chemistry book, biology book. I'm just giving you the facts here. So as you can see, water is very important. But so is the salt. And again, the potassium is found in all your fresh fruits and vegetables. Calcium cannot get into the cell by itself. It needs vitamin D. When vitamin D is present, the calcium is pulled inside the cell. And remember, I showed you the other day that calcium is called the king because when it gets into the cell, all the other minerals piggyback on the back of calcium. Something else happens. I'd like to go back to this for a moment. When the magnesium is put on the tongue and you have the glass of water, or half a glass, a little bit later the other half glass, that magnesium pulls the water inside the cell. And in the bilayed membrane, these around every cell, there's a little motor. And when the water's pulled through the membrane and into the cell, it causes that little motor to start spinning. And the spinning of that motor gives us a unit of energy. So when you're feeling a little tired or maybe a little bit peckish mid-morning, have the salt and have the water and you'll get a little bit of a pickup. So when everyone's going outside to have their cigarette or their cup of coffee, you have your crystal of salt, your glass of water. Absolutely, if you're working in an office, go outside and find a tree. Remember what the trees are giving off? Life-giving oxygen. Breathe deep, deeply from your abdominal muscle and that blast of oxygen. Remember what the oxygen does at the cellular level? Oxygen will give you 18 times more energy. We've looked at the inside of the workings of the cell a few times. And the way I explain it, it looks like there's one energy cycle per cell, but it is not true. So what I've drawn, you, drawn for you here is a whole lot of little energy cycles. In fact, in the muscle cell, you can have a hundred energy cycles to a muscle cell. I can hardly get my mind around that. And that's why the saying that you, you will receive more energy than you expend on your morning walk, because each one of those little energy cycles will give 18 times more energy if enough oxygen is going into your body. Glucose, it can't get into the cell by itself. It has to have insulin. Insulin's the key that unlocks the door to let the glucose into the cell. And what happens with many people, before diabetes develops, insulin resistance develops. You've heard of insulin resistant? And when insulin resistance develops, the cell's resisting insulin, so the glucose can't get into the cell, so the glucose stays in the blood, and the brain says to the pancreas, more insulin, more insulin, but the problem's not more insulin, the problem is there's insulin resistance at the cellular level. So what causes the insulin resistance? It's the high carbohydrate, high sugar diet. It's just, get, the cell gets to the point where it says, we've got enough, I'm sick of the sight of you. So how to recover from insulin resistance is to get the glucose, those carbohydrates, right down. Get the fiber up, the good proteins and the healthy fats. That's the best way to recover from insulin resistance. But you just imagine for a moment, and this is happening in America a lot today, people are not drinking enough water, they're not having the whole salt, and they're definitely not having many greens, which is where your magnesium is. So the little bit of water they're having is not getting inside the cell. They don't go out in the sunshine because they're scared of getting skin cancer. So they're not getting their vitamin D. So the calcium can't get in and the minerals can't get in. And they're trying to lose weight. So they've listened to a lot of the media hype that you've got to stop the fat because fat will make you fat. So they're on a high carbohydrate diet. Remember what fat will do? It'll give you satisfaction or a satiation, a full feeling. But if you're not having any fat, you just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. The whole packet of cookies goes, the whole chips go. There's almost, there's not a sign in your body that says enough. It's the fiber, protein, and the good fats that will give you that sign. So they're on a high carbohydrate diet, thinking that if they go fat free, they'll lose weight. And can you see what's happening? The water can't get in. The minerals can't get in, the glucose can't get in, and the body says, what are we going to do? Because remember, this is the CBD of the human body. What are we going to do? And the body says, we've got one last thing up our sleeve. We'll just force it into the cell. That's high blood pressure. So high blood pressure can be a result of dehydration. It can be a result of mineral deficiency, magnesium deficiency. It can be a result of vitamin D deficiency. It can be a result of a high carbohydrate, high sugar diet. It can be a result of inactivity. So there's a whole lot of things that can come together to contribute to high blood pressure. That's why the detective hat has to be put on to find out why these things are so. 
and in some cases it'll be a bit of this one, in some cases a bit of that one, in some cases other things. And you saw from the first lecture, it seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Back to Monday. We looked at how genetics loads the gun, but it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger.